here and welcome to how to write good i am your host daniel poppy you can find out more about me at danielpoppy.com uh, at my site you can find my well you can find all of these episodes if you uh, just happen to run into this you can go to my site you can find this podcast on any podcast app so if you find this on spreaker where it's put up or on my site just type it into a podcast app and it'll, it'll show up besides that you can check out my book the ninth hour um the it is a first the first book in an adventure series it sets everything up if you like adventure or if you like fantasy if you're a fan of fantasy you'll probably like it otherwise if you don't want to spring the 99 cents uh, for that book you can always check out one last toast for ebenezer fleet that is my it's a it's a challenge to myself it's a serialized story i think it's going to turn into three books in the end uh, that are right around it's i think they're going to be three books that are going to be around the length of a science fiction novel so right around that hundred thousand word mark so check that out you can check that out on my website if you want to read it or if you want to uh, if you want to listen to it, you can listen to it on this feed or on its own feed because some people might not actually enjoy listening to this podcast but might enjoy that story uh, by itself. Besides that, we're going to jump into the word of the week. The word of the week is a fairly new word. So here, I've, I've been having trouble with this, uh, not the specific word. So I started off the computer. I, tr I went through uh, my intro, right, because, you know, you have to have the intro. And uh, then I had 15 different notifications that were like, bing, 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 because that's what they do. And I'm like, man, that's really annoying. I'll just restart because I must have gotten past all the notifications. So if you just heard a little tone right there, that was another notification uh, out of nowhere because for whatever, I need to turn the sound off of them because I really don't care about the sound of the notifications. Actually, we're just going to do that right now. So our word of the week is opaque, and uh, some of you probably know this. Some of you who deal with paints, or deal with uh, when you when you color something, if you if you have if you're above the age of 25 and have ever uh, rented rented an apartment or had to paint something in your house, you probably know what the word opaque means. Uh, so opaque is something that does not allow light to pass through it, or it's something that's dull. Okay, so your walls are opaque in a sense, but it's typically um, it's typically with a color. So there's so if you are working on a design project on on whatever program you're using and you make something opaque, you can't you can't see through that thing. Another way to use opaque is that it's uh, difficult to understand what somebody is saying or they're they're not. They're not being free with what they're saying. It makes sense, right? You can't see through to what they're actually trying to say or what they're actually trying to mean. So again, opaque, uh, not allowing light to pass through or dull. This is a interesting accidental essence today, and it's something that I hope is useful to people. Um, I hear a lot of people there. I don't. I haven't had true writer's block in a very long time. Okay, and what I mean by true writer's block is that I just can't write because I can I can always write. Uh, it's not always good and it, it doesn't always feel good, but I can always write. And in some cases when I write and it doesn't feel good or I don't, I just hate doing it. You know, sometimes you write um, if you have, if you're a seasoned writer, I guess, if you've been writing for a long time and even if you're not good, because you know, I'm not, I'm not making this claim that I'm a great writer. Uh, at this moment, maybe I've made it in the past, but I'm not making that claim right now. But even if you aren't that great of a writer and you've developed the habit of writing, you can write even when you don't want to. You can write and you're like, man, you sit down, you're like, you know, I'm not in the mood, but I've got to get my hour of writing out or something like that. So you write for an hour and um, you're like, you get to, as you write, you're like, you know, I'm just putting words down on paper. This is complete crap, but I'll do it and I'll get it done. And in some cases, when you do that, you do end up going back and you're like, wow, I'm surprised that I actually created something that was half decent that I can work with. And in some cases, you walk back and you're like, this is this is the worst stuff I've ever seen in my life. But um, so once you when you if you've developed a habit of writing, you get to a point where you don't. You can just you can write uh, and you can force yourself to do it in a way that you weren't when you were younger, when you were as when you were less experienced but i do see people who um 
I do see a lot of writers who complain, you know, I wasn't able to write today. And it's just, and, it, and it wasn't because they had, didn't have time. Because saying that you can't write because you don't have time is, is oftentimes legitimate. You know, you get through a whole entire day and sometimes you're really tired. That's legitimate too. So, so if you go through your entire day, you get to the end, you have kids, you have all these different things you're working on. And you're like, you know, I just, I didn't have time by the time I got to the, the point in the day where I was able to write. Um, I just, I couldn't settle down and um, I was just so tired. Now, if you're a, if you're someone who's been writing a long time, you could probably write five minutes at a time and be okay. Um, just because you've developed that habit, you've been writing so long that writing is second nature. And it might, like I said, it, for me, like it's become to, it's come to that point where I can sit down and I can write five minutes. I can get up, I can do something. I, I can sit down and I can write five minutes. It's much better if I have time to relax and get into that flow, flow of writing. And I, I like the process a lot more, but it isn't necessarily the case that I have to um, have that time to do it to actually get something done. And I oftentimes, uh, I, and, and right now in my life, there's a lot of different distractions and there's things that pop up and I have to just deal with those things. So those things pop up when I'm writing and I go and deal with them and I mark, oh, I got five minutes done now. Oh, five minutes later, something pops up. Oh, I got 15, stuff like that. I try to get at least an hour of writing a day in a, on a project, um, which can be difficult at certain points. But I realize that some people, uh, it's a lot more difficult to sit down and do that. And, you, and pe some people haven't developed that skill yet. Um, and I think it's something that will come with time and come with practice. Some people, I think that there's some writers, I don't know if they think this, but some writers come off as if um, they come off as it, it, with this thing. They're like, oh, you must write every single day. You must, um, it's not necessarily good writing, but you just force yourself to write every single day. And there's, there's a certain wisdom to that because if you force yourself to write every single day, day you'll be developing a habit of writing. But at the same time, there is a, um, it's not, the, the, the advice needs to be fleshed out. First of all, you don't have to write every single day. You just have to write consistently. So if it works best for you to write, so, so for example, I try to write at least like an hour a day, um, which is a, it's a significant chunk of the day, but it's important to me. So I try to do that. And I found that it works best to write one hour a day instead of big chunks. But some people who want to get into that flow of writing might say, you know, I'm going to set aside six hours on Saturday. I'm going to set aside three hours every single week to write one chunk, one block of time. And I'm going to write during that three hour block instead of writing my 30 minutes every single day. And that's legitimate too. You, you're continuing to write consistently and uh, that's good. And you're getting stuff done. And it might be the case that you're actually more productive during that three hour block than if you wrote 30 minutes a day. There is something to be said about a daily habit though, okay? Uh, but at the same time, uh, don't worry as long as you're writing consistently. As I would say that as long as you're putting in time every single week, uh, think of life as weak blocks, um, not blocks that are gonna fall apart easily, but blocks of time that are, are week long, a week long. But um, for those of you who do, um, how would I say it? For those of you who sit down and you're like, you know, I, I just am completely uninspired and I sit down and I want to write, but I just can't think of anything to say. And I sit down and I want to write, but I'm just too riled up because that's the thing too. And I think a lot of people, there's so many other things in your life. There's so many other things that you need to focus on, right? If you don't, if you need to make money to get food, right, then you can't focus on writing as much. Or if you, if you, if bills, if, um, if it's hard to make ends meet, that's a worry that you have to deal with. And I'm of the opinion that if you deal with something that causes pain, either emotionally or mentally, it can uh, it can make it very difficult to write. But if you can find a way to overcome that, you can become a better writer. So it's a handicap that you need to overcome that can actually become a benefit in the end, if that makes sense, right? It, it doesn't necessarily help you make you better. Uh, pain doesn't necessarily make you better in your life. But if you choose to allow pain to make you better, there's a, I think a good chance that it will. But for this is for you. Um, for those of you who sit down and, and you are tired and you uh, can't relax and you have this great writer's block because uh, in some cases, if, you, if you've already developed that habit of writing, um, it's much easier to get into the flow of writing, but it's much easier just to sit down and write what you need to, okay? 
Uh, but if you if you are someone who hasn't, uh, you sit down and if you just write and you are every single day you, you sit down and write and you're just writing and you're like, you know, this is horrible stuff I'm writing. And the process even isn't even pleasurable at all. Never. It's never pleasurable. It's going to be it's going to take a lot of grit and perseverance to get through that process. So. Um, so the point of this is to help you develop that habit essentially help you develop a way to get into that flow that you like because every writer likes to get into that flow of uh, writing every writer likes to every writer likes to sit down and be swept away by their own story or swept away by their own writing now it might not even be good writing but as long as you enjoy the process like if you don't enjoy the process it's going to be harder to do it and everybody likes that i am i like that i don't know why you wouldn't like that the reason why we started writing uh, the reason why most people started writing in the first place is because they liked the pleasure of writing. It started as like a hobby and then it grew up and they're like, you know, I really, really like doing this. It's a kind of a bizarre thing, to be honest, that people like putting words on paper. People like finding the way in which words sound the best. Is that the correct grammar? I think it's really interesting and, and you can do it vocally. You can do it orally speaking, right? You can do it through your speech. Uh, but we who write prefer to do it through our um what we say, what we write, what, what's put down on paper, and there is a sense of how it sounds to that. Um, I guess it, it's not the same to me as, it's a bit odder to me than, than writing music, and it's a bit odder to me than painting or, or other forms of creativity, but it, it does have a connection to them, but at the same time, it's just kind of odd that it's just like, oh, I love this. I love putting words down on paper so much that I I just I want to do this. I want to I want to do something with it because I love it so much, which is cool. I like that a lot. Like I said, uh, uh, uninspired writing, I guess that's what we can call it. Uninspired writing is an uphill battle that, that can be exhausting and disheartening. And as a writer, you're probably likely introverted. And as a writer, you're probably someone who has been in a cave for the last five years so you don't know anybody in the outside world and if you um are a writer you don't know anybody in the outside world because we all live in caves we have no connections to other humans right right that's how it works um in some cases like people don't realize that it's disheartening and people don't give you encouragement uh because i i don't know why i don't understand i haven't really thought about that but maybe i'll think about that in the future make an episode on it but i don't think people tend to encourage writers unless there are other writers uh there is a if you're not on twitter and you're a writer and you want encouragement there's a big there's a very very big um community of writers on twitter and i'm sure you can connect to people who would share what you value and share how you do things um, and fit with what you do but in general people in the real world people that we're connected to the most personally don't tend to encourage us as much with our writing um where I mean, once you hit, hit adulthood, nobody encourages you. That's just how it is. Maybe that needs to change, but whatever. Um, but maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. But maybe instead of um, slogging through, maybe instead of slogging through your writing, you need to adopt what I am calling, I'm coining this term, and maybe somebody else has coined it in the past. So if it, it has been coined in the past, you can totally tell me that I'm just ripping somebody else off. Everybody who is a writer, and I guess everybody who's a creative, but especially writers, because writing is a, it's a solo, it's oftentimes a solo endeavor when you actually do the, the hardest part of writing, um, the first draft, I guess, maybe it's not the hardest part, but it's a solo endeavor that doesn't have a, it, you do it by yourself when it's, when it's the first, you definitely need people around you, uh, you need a community to help you be, um, to help you to be successful in the end of publishing and putting it out into the world but when you actually do the writing you're doing it by yourself so there's nobody around you to be like hey you can do this no this is really good keep on going and there's nobody to hype you up right there's nobody slapping you on the shoulders it's a football thing i guess slapping slapping you on the shoulder pad slapping you on the helmet punching you in the head uh that's a that's a guy sports thing. We didn't. We I didn't actually punch anybody in the head, and I've never had my head punched to psych me up. But I'm assuming it would, it would get your blood flowing. You know, if you know what I mean. Um, it would just. It would just. Um, like being slapped will just get your heart racing. That's what I mean, and it's good. Good to have that happen. So we need to have writing clothes. Okay, we as writers, I think, need to have writing clothes, especially if we want to develop a habit of writing that is 
uh, pleasurable, especially that first draft, because that first draft can be a slog. It's annoying, and I, I get it. Uh, I'm in the middle of rewrites, and I would consider my rewrites still part of my first draft because they're the first draft of the rewrites, and I don't do any editing and polishing until I'm done with um, until I'm done with what the story is going to be, and I'm done with rewrites. So it's essentially just another part of the first draft for me. But um, the first draft can be a slog, and um, we need to figure out a way to not make it as much of a slog and make it more pleasurable. So writing clothes aren't necessarily clothes, but can be. And uh, the reason why I called them writing clothes is I don't remember which author did this, but there was an author who'd dress up. He would, he would get on his fanciest clothes before he started writing, and then that would help him get into the... That would help him get into... Um, get into the mindset of writing. It would help set him up to help him write later. Uh, but writing clothes goes beyond just writing too. You can actually apply this to different situations. There's been studies, and I don't know how good they are anymore. I don't know if they've been dis disproven. It's been about five years, um, maybe long. It's been about probably 10 years, maybe longer since these studies have come out so maybe somebody found something different but the last time I knew of them you actually do better with um, certain clothes on so if you're gonna go do it have it if you're in school and you want to do better in a test dress up right uh, for whatever reason there's a uh, maybe it maybe it makes your mind maybe it wakes you up better maybe it just makes you more confident because you do need a certain amount of confidence when you're going into a test um, anxiety a high, too high of a level of anxiety will shut your brain down so if you have, if you need some anxiety to keep you on your toes, but you need a certain amount of confidence too. So having uh, that confidence will help you help you um, not worry about little little tiny details, help you process things better, help you not to be distracted from what you're doing. So if you dress up for tests, um, then that's going to help. Or if you dress up. Uh, if you dress up well for an interview, you're going to feel more confident than if you didn't dress up as much. So right now my hair is really messed up and I, I don't feel as confident about this podcast because my hair is messed up and I'm like, oh, people are going to be looking at my hair this whole entire time. Um, other, other things that I think that help with this is people listen to music when they're exercising. Exercising can be a slog, right? Exercising can be something that's painful but when you're done with it, you feel satisfied. But that music help you, helps you get through that process. Um, another thing I've noticed, so I have issues sleeping. I'm not, I'm not a good sleeper. Well, right now I am because I'm completely sleep deprived. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sleep deprived person right now, so I haven't had trouble sleeping for the past few months. But um, in the past, I've had a lot of trouble sleeping, and I've always looked up stuff, and, and I've done research on how to best help with sleep. And what you do is you stop and you create a, a you create a ritual about an hour before bed, and you don't do certain things before bed, and then you go and you brush your teeth, you get ready, you you lay down, you read your book, etc. Um, and one part of of um, helping your insomnia is that if you can't fall asleep at night, you don't just lay in bed. You get up and do something for a little bit. You go back to bed. You try to fall asleep. If that doesn't work, you get up and do something because you're trying to develop a habit of sleep in the bed. You're trying to make your bed a place of relaxation and a place where you sleep. Um, so those are the things you can help in certain areas, right, that aren't writing. And there's a lot of different other areas that I'm sure that can help as well. Um, when you're trying to find something when you drive, you turn on the radio because it doesn't distract you as much. I guess, that, guess that's not a habit. If you're in a sport, especially if it's an individual sport, you can have specific rituals before you do things. I know people who fight. Um, they do, you know, um, the MMA stuff, but I also know people, I've known people throughout my life who did wrestling and people have specific rituals before they did, had a match. because or And people do that before um, football games as well or people do that before whatever whatever sport they're in, they'll do that as well because it's a high intensity thing that takes a lot of focus. They want to be focused on that sport. And that's the whole idea. They want to be focused on what they're doing and not be distracted by outside things. And I think that's really where it comes in. I think that's really what happens. I think that's really what happens to us when we write that, um, that distracts us and gets us out of that mood, right? Uh, one thing that can, one thing that's almost impossible—it's hard to get over—is being really, really tired. 
getting really being really tired and trying to do something while you're really tired is going to make it more difficult to do that thing but if you have other worries on your mind if you have those worries on your mind and you're trying to write or if you have something else going on right it's hard to listen to someone talk and write at the same time it's hard to read and write at the same time I, I would say it's pretty much impossible to do that but get rid of those distractions laser focus on the writing help yourself relax before you do that so that you can get into that habit uh, you develop habits uh, you can develop habits slash take on certain things to make yourself do better in these certain areas um, so what I would suggest is you knit your own writing clothes and like I said writing clothes aren't necessarily real clothes uh, writing clothes can be other things in your life so if you want if you want to set aside and it might it might work best in this situation if you're someone who wants to set aside um, a three hours to write a week right you have a, a chunk of time that's three hours to write a week maybe you want to say hey I want to set aside three and a half hours to write a week and my half an hour is my ritual I go through before I start writing um, it, it might be making some tea it might be um, reading a little I know people read books before they start writing and it helps them write better afterwards I think it relaxes you I don't think it's because you're reading the book and you're gaining more knowledge about something I think it's just because when people read they tend to read for relaxation so when they read they get more relaxed and it relaxes them there's a floaty thing in front of me that's why I'm waving my hand there's a it relaxes them it helps them focus on what they're doing um, it might be the case that you just need to dress up really fancily it might be the case that you need to buy yourself a snuggie and you write in a snuggie um, it might be the case that you need to get a little heater you know you put it under you, you drink apple cider whatever thing you're trying to do whatever thing that makes you comfortable whatever thing that helps you focus whatever thing thing that helps you to sit down and start writing um, better is what you need to do you're knitting your own writing clothes it could be one thing right it might be the case that you just need to make a cup of coffee you're gonna sit down you're gonna drink your coffee and write I've always found it the, to be the case that writing with coffee helps me write better because I just um, it the coffee is a comforting thing I guess even though it raises your anxiety level if you deal with anxiety right coffee is comforting because it's hot and it wakes you up it focuses your mind unless you deal with anxiety then it makes your mind more fractured but whatever but it might be tea for you um but but besides coffee it might be tea for you um, it might be the case that you like wearing hats right it might be the case that you know having a scarf on or having specific shoes on it could be anything right experiment um, find what makes you comfortable comfortable find what makes you confident do those things that make you comfortable do those things that make you confident I have I'm not able to say comfortable right now for whatever reason comfortable um, but it might be a specific room right it might be the case that you write best in a little tiny room in your basement or in a closet and if that works do it because it might drown out all the distraction you might you might write better if you have a nice view and in some cases it's impossible to have a nice view so that's understandable you might write better with music you might write better without music or certain types of music there's a lot of different things you can do uh, there's a lot of different things you can do you might but write better if you meditate beforehand uh, I'm just giving you examples and you might write better right after you exercise right you might get done exercising uh, you're all sweaty you sit down you write for an hour you write for half an hour you write for 15 minutes you get that stuff out because you just have that runners high or you have that exercise high that you get from exercising and there are you might write better with certain pens <laughs> okay so um, I'll get show you so these are my pen of choice this is it's a simple here let me flip it it's one of those simple Bic pens it's not focusing on it it's one of those simple Bic pens right you can tell from that and um, it's it, it I don't like pens that are too big so people have given me pens that are too big for my hands and I have issues with pain in my hands and pain in my wrists so these pens are smaller and uh, they're easier to grip but I've also tried other pens from different manufacturers that are the same style that are the same size right and they feel fine when you hold them but what happens with the pens is that they run out of they stop working so this I've I've um I'm just holding this pen up again and again this specific type of pen I've I've used so many of these pens up I don't even know the count right um, and I use them up and you see you're like oh yeah there's nothing left in the pen it's absolutely dry but there's other pens I've used and they have 
um, I use them for five hours and they stop working. And that can be an issue, right? Some people like these, um, those glide pens. I don't know what they're called. Those G627 rocket fuel engine pens. You know what I'm talking about where they're nice and smooth when you write them. You like the aesthetic, you like the feel. That's perfectly fine. You use the pen that you like. Um, I just like these because they, they write, they don't, they don't smudge and they never, they never have, they almost never have issues with the ink suddenly drying up and not working when there's still ink in the pen, which is a really big frustration because if you're writing and suddenly your pen dries up and you're trying to write, it's, it's a different, it's a, like lighter and then suddenly you can't write with it and it and works at certain times so that it doesn't work at others. That can be a frustration and it can get you out of that flow of writing and you don't want to get out of that flow of writing. If you're someone who types, maybe you want to get an ergonomic keyboard. Uh, maybe you want to invest in that. Or if you like the aesthetic of a typewriter and you like the maybe you like that aesthetic and you want to get a typewriter. Or maybe you want to get a typewriter keyboard. And uh, if you're like 60 years old and you use typewriters your whole life, maybe it's better for you to write with just two fingers because that's how you're supposed to write with a typewriter. That's why that's why these old people um, that's why these old people write with two, uh, type with two fingers in a lot of cases is because they use typewriters. It's not that they don't know how to type, it's just they don't they don't know how to type with a keyboard. They know how to type with a typewriter. Um, let me see, what, are, what other things do I have? There's just so many things that you could do, uh, honestly. You need to experiment, you need to find what works best. It might be the case that turning off your phone is one of those things. And I would just take some time and um, think, oh, what are, what are things I wanna try? Maybe it's a shower. Maybe it's a cold shower. Maybe um, maybe it's looking through old photos. You know, it could be anything. Maybe it's cleaning, right? Some people they are really distracted when things aren't clean, so they need to clean things before they're they're productive. So maybe you need to clean, and then you need to take time. So uh, if you want to write for three or four hours on a Saturday morning, maybe it's the time of day. Even I find it to be the case. That if I wake up really early and I've had a good night's sleep, if I wake up at like five in the morning and I do writing, it's a lot harder to be distracted when I'm writing at five in the morning because my brain just is physically incapable of being distracted when it's so early. Maybe it's that. It could be. It's it's a million different. I keep on coming up with ideas. It might be the case that you just need noise noise canceling headphones. It might be the case that you need white noise. Um, I'm just. Like I said, <laughs> just so many things. Maybe you need to shave, right? If you're a dude, maybe you need to shave beforehand. It's just an aesthetic you like. Maybe you need to smoke. Um, maybe lay off on that a little bit. Maybe get something that mimics the smoking. Maybe you need to chew gum. I don't know. There's so many different things you could do. It really depends on the person. It really depends on what makes them comfortable. It really depends on what helps focus their mind. I would suggest laying off hard drugs. So, so people, uh, Stephen King did write some books well on cocaine, and it may be the case that he forgot Cujo because he was writing books well on cocaine. Uh, I think he might have forgotten that story. He, he doesn't remember writing, I think it was Cujo. He doesn't remember writing Cujo, and I believe he was on cocaine while writing Cujo. So maybe you want to lay off things like methamphetamine, which will focus your mind and will probably make you productive. Maybe you want to lay off things like speed, uh, prescription, prescription um, stimulants. Lay off those because it'll get you addicted. Maybe you want to lay off things like drinking uh, because it's bad. Because if you write a lot, it's bad for your kidneys. It's not good for you at all. Maybe you want to lay off things like smoking because it'll give you cancer, stuff like that. Find healthy ways to actually develop that habit. Um, but yeah, like I said, develop a ritual. And um, some of you may be thinking, well, you know, if I do this, it doesn't help. This is what I suggest. Uh, and I, I've suggested a certain thing similar to this in the past. If you block out a specific time of day, if you're able to block out a specific time of day and you write only at the specific time of day and all you do is write at that specific time of day, your brain, will help, there, will be, there will be pathways developed in your brain that will, that will help you uh, get into that habit right away. So it'll be hard at first, but after slogging through it at that specific time of day, that specific time of day will come up, you'll sit down, you'll write, you'll you'll go and get into that flow. But we can do other things too. We don't have to have a specific time of day. If you can if you can um, knit your own writing clothes and you can do it all at a specific time of day, that's going to help even more. But if maybe you don't have 
uh, maybe your maybe your schedule varies. Maybe things pop up. Maybe you're on call a lot, right? Where you're not sure if that's going to happen. In that case, it's a lot better to find those things that are going to help you write, and then you're going to do those things before you write, or at, you, maybe you do them before you write, maybe you do them as you write, and that'll help you get into that flow of writing. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you're going to be able to write smoothly and it's going to be pleasurable right away, but what I'm, I am going to tell you is to pair your writing with those things, right? Do your little 15-minute ritual. Maybe you run for 15 minutes and you go write, whatever it's going to be. Maybe you take a nap for half an hour and you wake up and you go write, whatever it's going to be. Maybe you take a nap for 10 minutes. I don't know. You're weird if you can just fall asleep for 10 minutes and get up. Um, and then you go and write. But what that will do is it'll help you shift. It'll help you take your habit and shift it where you want it to go. So maybe you are um, stuck in an airport and your writing habit is to do like three different things. Maybe you take a long walk. You can do that in an airport. Maybe you have some coffee and maybe you listen to music. So if you have headphones, you can listen to music. You can get a coffee from one of those places. You can write in the middle of an airport uh, because you have your habit and you're just shutting out the world. You're getting into that habit. I think one of the reasons that I... Um, so I have been writing for the majority of my life by this time. Yeah, the majority of my life. Huh. That's weird to think about. I've been writing for almost all of my life, to be honest, but I've been writing seriously for the majority of my life, which a lot of you probably have been. Some of you are newer writers, and this is more to you, right? If you've been writing the majority of your life and you have no issues with writer's block, you could just sit down and write, that's fine. But I also grew up in a big family, and my family is very loud, so I needed to learn how to focus in different situations. And this is what you're trying to learn how to do right now. You're trying to learn how to focus in different situations. So because I had a big family, I've learned how to focus in different situations where I just shut out the world and I can do my thing. And I do have certain things that help me. Like, like I said, I have coffee. Um, music definitely does help me write. It helps me shut out things outside my brain. Um, there's other things as well. If I don't have a daily ex exercise habit, it's harder to focus, stuff like that. But because I grew up in a big family, because I developed that habit of just being able to do things when there's noise and there's chaos around, I can adapt my writing to different situations. And that's what we're trying to get to today. That's what I'm trying to uh, convey to you today. You can adapt your writing to different situations if you pair it with certain things. If you create a ritual for your writing, um, maybe, so it might be the case that you want to create a portable ritual, right? Something that you can always do no matter where you're at. And you bring along the things you need for that ritual. Some people like drawing. Drawing can be a very relaxing thing. So you might draw for 15 minutes and then you jump into your writing. 15 minutes of drawing isn't very long, but if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Some of you just need to exercise. You can exercise in place. There's certain things you can do to exercise. So um, one, you can definitely create a habit that is not portable, but it can be, uh, if you're home, you can do it. But if you can create a portable habit, that's going to be, that's going to help you even more, right? If you, um, I don't know, there's a lot of different things. Um, you you med you can meditate where in different places. You can do so many of these different things I've conveyed in different areas. The only things that you can't do, you could sleep. It'd be harder, but you can sleep. Um, the only things you can't do are things like, oh, what does it look like outside? Oh, is this a... So my goal is to have a little shack, right? It has, it has heat, maybe not even electricity, but it has heat and uh, it's away from everything. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have the internet or anything like that. And I do my writing in that shack away from everything and it has a nice view. But um, that's probably going to be a long time before that happens. And uh, there's always going to be times during my life where I need to be mobile when I write. So I need to find a way to do it when I go to other places, when I'm in other situations. Because not every situation is ideal. But the point of this is to try to make um, to try to make that situation work for us. So instead of us being bent to the will of that situation, we're bending that situation to our will. We are, in some cases, shutting out the world. In some cases, developing a habit of using the world uh, to our advantage to get us into that creative habit, to get us into that habit of writing. I'm just going to have. The, I'm just going to um, suggest one last thing that you could do to develop this habit and um, then I'm gonna be done. So one thing that writers develop and I think that it's a more natural thing for writers, uh, especially if you're interested. So if you're interested in writing, 
I don't know, I think there's different types of writers, but I'm definitely sure there's writers that are similar to this, where you look at stuff and you're just interested in things. Um, being interested in as much stuff as possible around you, I think is one of the best habits to develop to help get you into that writing mode. So this requires you to slow down. Uh, so if I were stuck in, I'm trying to think of, the only places I can think that you get stuck are like hospitals and airports, right? Or if you're um, waiting for an interview or something like that. I don't know, maybe you don't want to bring your writing materials to an, to an interview though. But maybe you're stuck and you're waiting for somebody to pick you up from a job or from school or from an airport, or maybe you're just stuck somewhere in general, right? For whatever reason you're stuck. Now, what might help you is just slowing down, becoming quiet and looking at the things around you and really studying the details of the things around you and, be, and becoming interested in those things because there, every piece of reality is very interesting. Um, my computer is made by people and things made by people aren't as interesting unless they're made by hand. Okay, things ma mass produced aren't as interesting. Things made by hand are very interesting in a lot of cases because they have a lot of nuance to them. They have a lot of tiny little idiosyncrasies and, and pieces. Uh, that that are in nothing else, but even things made by that are mass produced are interesting. You start looking at the little tiny details. My computer isn't a very interesting thing, but if I start looking at it, I start noticing. Oh, it has dust. It has little tiny. Um, this has a texture that I never noticed before. There's a little piece of um, stuff on the letter C, the the C key, and stuff like that. But there's always things around you that are more interesting than you would expect. You just have to slow down and look, look at the details. And that's another habit that just might, might help you to um, get rid of the distractions and to start relax, relaxing and to start getting into that creative mindset because that's really what we're trying to do here. Congratulations, you got to the end of my podcast. So you either had to listen to my voice or you had to listen to my voice and watch my face, which I don't envy you, let's just say that. But if, you, uh, if you're if you someone who likes this podcast and you're thinking, you know, I'd like to support him in this podcast or the other creative things he's doing, creative things I'm doing, uh, you know, there's a few things you can do because some people, some people don't know what they can do to support people who create stuff. So these are the few things you can do that will really, really help me. First of all, check out my website, check out the other things I'm doing. Uh, second, comment on things, share them, like them, subscribe. Subscribe if you haven't already. And the third thing you can do is give reviews on different places, all right? So uh, the biggest thing for this podcast is going on to iTunes, giving it an honest review, telling people why you like it, telling people why you hate my voice, why you hate my face, but telling people why they should really check it out despite the fact that I have so many failings in terms of looks and voice. Um, other than that, if you, if you want to check out my books, grab a, grab a copy of the book and, uh, listen to the serialized novel, give, give digital copies away. That's a really big thing too. I always want to give you something that is valuable to you. I always want to give someone listening to this podcast, something that's going to going to stick with them or a book that they can actually own. Uh, and, and you can own that book for very, very cheap. So go check that out on Amazon, uh, the different things I said, subscribe, upvote, comment, share, and definitely, definitely give it a review on, on iTunes. All right, as always, my name is Daniel Poppy, and this is How to Write Good.